Hello everybody and welcome back to Aurora 4X. I of course am Serbian and today we are continuing on with uh, our little tutorial here on playing through Aurora. Um, now, where we left off we had just finished constructing our first explorer, the Mark Aronson Canberra class. And with the ship construction and auto assignment set, uh, Captain John Heath has been auto assigned to the Mark Aronson with a survey bonus of 25%. Where is he? He is a captain, John Heath. There he is. Um, now he has a survey bonus of 25%. That's that's. He, I'm pretty sure he's probably going to be the one with the highest survey bonus. Uh, where is it? Yep, 25%. Um, he's got a terrifying, terraforming bonus of 15%, a fleet movement initiative rating of 140. Now, Daniel Walker has a similar survey bonus, uh, but he has a factory production bonus of 30%, so that'll be more useful as well elsewhere. And he has an initiative movement or a rating of 118. So he's got a little lower initiative rating, um, and he's got a much higher bonus elsewhere. Um, I don't expect that those will have actually played any role in the assignment, but um, that's the one that is most suitable for him. So, with our captain giving us a 25% bonus and our surveyor now constructed, first thing we're going to do is we are going to peel it off from our shipyard task group. But before we do that, let's run through the UI. First and foremost, Empire, if you're using designer mode or SM with multiplayer races, you'll want to choose there. Um, the name of the task group is here. We only have one, so I'll go ahead and actually split the ship off now. There we go. So this will give you a full list of all the task groups that you have in the game for your Empire. It'll give you their location, which system they're in, and which task force that they are part of. Fleet headquarters at the default, you, 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 but you are able to make more. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment as well, as soon as we're done giving out the order. Current and max speed, fairly straightforward. Max button sets it to the maximum, set sets it to the, to the specified one. Um, there are circumstances where you want to set it to a much lower one, um, if you because even when a fleet is stationary and not actually consuming fuel, its thermal signature is still equal to its uh, speed. Uh, or its maximum uh, thermal signature. So by reducing the speed, you also reduce th the thermal signature of your ships. Um, so there, it, there are useful uses for having a slow, uh, below maximum speed. Uh, center map will keep the system and galactic maps centered on the task groups um, as each fleet is selected. So I believe it will focus on your own fleets and show ground will um, show ground units in here that are boarded onto our onto your actual ships. Uh, survey points: how many points you generate. So the market. So with the captain, so we generate three by default, and the twenty-five percent bonus gives us another point eight. So we get three point eight. This is now survey points are modified by your morale. It's a flat multiplier. Uh, however. These numbers do not modif do not change. So these numbers will remain constant. You just modify them by your morale, by your morale uh, to get your final survey points. Uh, initiative initiative is complicated in that the higher initiative ship um, will follow lower initiative ships. All right. Um, so what does that mean? So that means that it starts by default. So if you, know, if you have another task group that is set to 101, then it will, um, if it's a fleet that is has a lower initiative rating, will follow, no, will lead this ship. So this, this fleet will follow a task group that has 99 and will be followed by 99. And what I mean by follow is in terms of move order. So it will go, uh, so it will, it, will, it will move the 99 fl um, f group, then it will move the 100 group, then it'll move the 101 group. Now, why is this important? Why do you want a high max initiative? Well, the reason for that is because if you move 
first, you dictate which direction you're moving. If, um, if a ship is moving faster than the ship that it's following, then it ha and it moves first, it has to guess where that ship is going to be, uh, where it's going to move to. Uh, and sometimes it's not good at doing that. So by having your initiative be lower when you're following, um, it causes your fleet to overshoot. Now, if you're following your own fleet, that could be a problem if your fleet is the one that's protecting the fleet it's following from point defense, uh, from missiles, right? So your point defense ships definitely want to be following the leader. Um, task groups that are in defensive formation, they need to be at a lower in, at a, uh, a lower initiative so that they can, no, at, at a higher initiative, so that they can follow the leader. Right, um, and for gunships, it's also important because then they can follow the enemy that they're chasing and maintain the location. Um, now, what a fleet can do if it's following another fleet and it moves after them, even if the speed is higher, they can move to only the precise locations. They can automatically adjust the speed, move to the location of the ship they're following, and sit on top of them. If they don't. If they move first, then they will move their full set speed and they can overshoot. Um, so you ideally want your initiative to be higher than whatever task group you are actually following. And your maximum is, of course, determined by your um, commanding officer. But initiative can be extremely complex. Um, most of the time you're fine with 100, but you might want to move some. Um, senior officer is the, is the highest ranked officer of the task group and therefore its leader. Uh, time and distance is a, a current and all order distance and um, ETA. So it takes speed and range in consi into consideration for current and total orders in here. Um, this, of course, is your list of ships. So it gives you the ship name, what class they are, how much fuel they have, how much ammo they have, how many shields they have, what their thermal signature is, what their, how many maintenance supplies they have left, what their maintenance clock, their um, deployment, your their morale, their grade bonus, and their task force training is. And we'll cover all those points once we actually get our uh, fleet. Um, down here we have task group order. You're going to spend most of your time in this section of the screen. Um, you have filter. You have location filters. So if you want to go to a comet, you have to make them visible. Um, planets in the system the task group is in uh, are usually the only ones that are available uh, by default. Uh, you have to turn on anything else show all pops is a uh, interesting one because what it does is it shows you all populations uh within for uh, within the entire galaxy really um and what it will let you do is it will let you uh, auto route to that particular location so if you're two systems over and you want to go back to your home world you have to show all pops to make it actually visible find it and then you can add your movement uh, auto modifications will auto, auto, automatic auto include Lagrange points. Lagrange points can be uh, a special inter-system jump points that allow a ship to jump within a system without having to fly the e, um, intermediary space. You do not need a jump drive to use it. Um, it they only appear when you have specific, especially large gas giants. So super Jovians and large Jovians. Um, and they can generate Lagrange points. They can jump between the star and the um, uh, gas giant. Uh, no auto route jump check. Uh, it's assumed that the fleet is capable of jump making jumps. So if you have a non-jump capable uh, ship and you plan to include in the orders for it to meet up and absorb a task group that has a ship that can jump it, you can tick this to order the, so that you can give it orders that will include the jumps that it can't make now, but could make once it meets up with that task group. Um, so those are the buttons there. Uh, system locations, this is uh, the locations where you can do your order. Actions available are what you can do at that location, and this is your actual order list. Um, and we'll come back to here in a second. But add, you can in most orders you can double click, 
but otherwise you can also add move. Some orders have to be add moved. If you double click it, it'll break and you'll throw an error. Remove will remove the last, uh, last order and remove all will clear the list. Uh, orbital distance is for how far you wanted to do an extended orbit. Um, max amount of load is for loading um, loading orders, how much you want to load if you do not want to load full cargo. Uh, order delay is uh, how many seconds you want to delay an order uh, before actually being executed. Um, rarely you will use this, but there are some, rare, some situations where you would. Uh, cycle moves will cause it to constantly repeat. Uh, repeat will take what's listed and will just duplicate it or triplicate or quadruple. Note that it does not replace the existing orders. It will only duplicate and then add them in. Uh, so they'll just tack them onto the end. Um, system app will open the system app. New task group will create a new task group at the capital. Add colony will create a colony uh, that's empty on the selected body. Rename will rename the, the task group. Uh, order of battle opens the racial order of battle window, and we can see here uh, that we have um, the Mark Harrison there. Clicking it will take you to the individual ship screen. We'll come back to that later. Uh, crew grade shows you the crew grade, which is 12%, and center will load the center and things. Okay. That's the order of battle. And delete will delete. You can click this without being in Space Master mode, and uh, it might give you an order. I'm not going to click it just at the moment. It might give you an order, uh, a confirmation, uh, but if you delete it, it's gone forever. There is no way to get it back. You can Space Master it in, but it's gone. Any officers on the ships are gone. Any cargo in those ships is gone. All the fuel, ammunition, and everything that's included in the task group is gone. So be careful with deleting. Um, no wreckage either. So note that. Um, active on turns on our active sensors on the entire fleet. Active off turns them off. Shields on, shields off. Straightforward. Uh, missile launch. This button will cause um, all ships that have missiles locked to fire control. Uh, that have missile tubes that are loaded will fire. Um, you do not need a fire control to launch these. That said, um, this button and one other do have really weird interactions with jump shock, which I will also talk about later. So this button may not necessarily work the way you think it will. It'll work. Uh, equalize maintenance and uh, equalize maintenance and fuel will balance out maintenance supplies and fuel percentage across your entire fleet. Now, fuel will be balanced by percentage. I believe maintenance supplies will also be balanced by percentage. So if you have one ship that's super thirsty, it's going to eat fast, and then the rest of them will just drain down until it's balanced. Um, if you want to get a ship back up to 100% so it can peel off and go do its business, um, you will have to do that at the ship screen, not through the equalized fuel button. Because you, it's... Unless you already have 100% fuel for every ship, equalized fuel will never get any one ship up to 100%. So take note of that. Um, save escorts will record um, any escorts for uh, in here, the threat axis. Um, recall will pull them in. Deploy will take them out and put them back the way it was. Um, if you have uh, the escort, will detach the selected ship as an independent fleet. So if I were to select a second ship and hit escort, it will turn it into an escort and we'll give it some set orders um, to go and protect. Uh, detach will detach. So it'll detach it as an independent fleet. Um, so that's a little shortcut instead of selecting and hitting split TG. Uh, assemble will incorporate all subfleets. Now I believe detach will set it as a subfleet, which assemble can undo. Um, but assemble will automatically collect all subfleets. Subfleets can be set uh, in here. So you can select a superior and that will set this fleet as a subfleet to the one you set. Um, launch parasites, recover parasites, uh, and reload parasites. Parasites are anything that docks to the ship. So uh, fighters, facts. Well, considering you can dock a battleship to a bigger carrier, 
anything that is set as a um, as a, as a mothership, anything that has a mothership set. Uh, no default and no conditions deals with default and conditional orders. Um, so those two will clear your default and conditional orders. Close is close, fairly straightforward. Order of battle is visible here in shorthand. Order templates. If you have a set of orders that you want to ship to do, but you do not want to cycle or instantly repeat them, uh, for example, if you have fuel harvesters that only have to collect once every whenever, but you do not necessarily want to use default or conditional orders, um, uh, a really good a really good one is if you have a mineral depot in another system and you want freighters to only go out every once in a while but there's no set amount that you're waiting for and the amount that you're collecting varies you can set a, you can you can set up your orders to go collect and deliver the minerals and they can just save it as a template it should be fairly simple very easy what it, what to do what it does uh, use will actually load the template in save will pull the temp pull the template out delete will delete a template um, now these are the default conditional and escort orders that are that are given assigned to this current fleet this one will set it to survey nearest survey location which is for gravitational surveys geo will set it to survey next five system bodies which is the most efficient um, gravitational survey uh, order that you can give I'll go through the other ones and I'll explain why in a second once we get to special orders. And of course, cargo, ground units, task group information. Uh, so you can see your fuel, you can see what's loaded in cargo, how much cargo is in use, uh, any ground troops you have loaded, any um, offices you have loaded, any teams you have loaded. Uh, essentially, miscellaneous information that is not anywhere else uh, and not every ship might need or have. Moving on, special orders. Um, threat access is um, a little bit difficult to use sometimes. Uh, essentially, what you have is um, you, you designate a threat which will define zero degrees. So zero degrees will point. Uh, so zero degrees on threat axis will point towards the threat, right? Um, by default, it's a protected task group destination, so forwards. Um, but you, once you have a hostile contact, you can set the hostile contact as the uh, threat. So, for example, you can have the fleet rotate 90 degrees so that your what would normally be front is aimed towards the enemy. So you have your point defense ships in a picket line at front. Um, but if you're moving 90 degrees to the enemy, you can rotate that so that the, point of, that the picket ships are pointing towards the enemy rather than pointing front where they're going to be useless. So you designate which target is zero degrees for the formation here. Um, task group is which task group this task group will protect. So the fleet that, that this task group is guarding. So essentially the center of the formation for this fleet. Distance is how far away it will sit and the offset bearing is from zero. So if you set it to say 40,000 kilometers at 25 degrees, this will sit at, at 25 degrees, 40,000 kilometers away from the task group that we set um, with the with the 25 degrees clockwise offset being from this threat location. Um, so you would use this for area defense, uh, point defense ships, uh, picket ships, stuff like that. Basically things that are not necessarily going to want to sit directly on top of the task group. But at the same time, you want them to be a constant um, bearing and distance from the task group that they're going to be protecting. So that way you can give a single task group orders without having to then uh, figure out what orders to give all the others around it. And if you have like 25 escorts, that's a hell of a lot of orders they're going to be saving yourself by using um, using this. Um, but that's rarely used. That's rarely used. Because of a couple of mechanics that work and a couple of mechanics that don't, um, this is rarely used. Uh, default orders are what a ship will do if it has no order. By default, it's no special. Uh, you have two slots, primary and secondary. Um, so you have survey nearest asteroid, move, moon, planet, planet or moon's nearest body. 
these are pretty standard, fairly straightforward. They only target specific uh, body types or nearest body. The next one is the next five, next five system bodies. And what the difference between them is that this one um, only allocates the nearest body. This one allocates the nearest five. Now, the reason why that's important is that this allocation only gets done once per increment. Okay, so if you have five asteroids right near each other, and you do uh, survey nearest, and you do tiny increments, then no problem. Because as soon as it's finished surveying one asteroid, it's going to immediately get the order to go survey the next one. But if you do a five day jump, and surveying all five would take only a day, then it'll take the entire five days to survey one of those asteroids. So it'll go, get the order to survey one of those, it'll walk over to it, it'll finish the survey, and then it'll sit there because this order is not cycling. So survey next five is the most efficient if you're doing fast time jumps. Otherwise, any number is fine. The other thing is a survey next five will coordinate with any other ships that also have the same order. Um, so what that means is that one ship will snag the nearest five, the next survey ship next to it will snag a different five. So they won't overlap as much. Uh, whereas nearest could cause ships to try and um, uh, uh, leapfrog over each other. So you get inefficiency that way. Um, whereas this way, one ship might decide, oh, I'm going to go clockwise around the asteroid belt. The other one will go, okay, I'm going to go anti-clockwise because the nearest five are in the opposite direction. And then they'll do like a big loop around. Um, then we have survey, survey next, uh, survey location and next three, next three is kind of redundant just because of how long it takes to survey one location. Um, and there's no, really no reason to have them lock down, uh, which locations they're going to survey, uh, follow higher fleet in system is in here. So it will cause them to automatically follow it. You would use this for escorts that you don't necessarily want to use the threat access for. Um, I think this might actually, yeah, the, 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 this is separate to the threat access, I believe. Move to entry jump point will move them to whatever system they entered into the system through. Not sure how that would work with Sol. I don't think they would have one allocated. Uh, refueling current system, really no reason to set this as a primary ever. Uh, secondary, perhaps. Uh, load colonists at 25 plus, load colonists at capital, and load unload colonists at 25. This is stuff you would use for uh, colony ships, for kickstarting um, uh, colonies, small colonies. Um, this is stuff you want to use if this will override the um, this. So if you have a colony that is set to be stable um, or a destination colonist, the civilians will cause it, will either leave it alone or bring people in. And then you can have freighters, which will override that and then use it as a source to feed people out. So that way you can have like feeding hubs uh, that will um, shuttle people out into a system. So you can, you can do some interesting stuff in there, but generally speaking, this is just stuff that's, a, that's a, these are the orders that civilian um, colony ships use. So these three, uh, well, these two specifically. Uh, build jump gate in nearest jump point. This is what you would use for your jump gate builder if you wanted to automatically go and explore and um, meet new people. Uh, pick up automated mine from population and deliver automated mine to mining colony. Um, this is useful if you um, have a central hub that you're feeding mines out to. Um, you do, of course, want to make sure that you have a non-mining colony population that has mines and or, or, and it's in my, or mining colonies that do not have anything that makes them not mining colonies. So these two can be extremely picky. Uh, move to nearest trade location. You will never use this because the civilians are the only ones who use this. Uh, your ships can't pick up uh, trade goods anyway. Uh, unload passengers, fairly straightforward. Um, civilians use this mainly because you really will have no reason to ever use um, uh, passenger compartments except for roleplay. 
Role play is the only reason. Because the amount of passengers that they carry is like 250. When populations are measured in the millions, it's nothing. Um, passenger compartments are only really useful for civilians because they get you wealth for transporting them. Uh, move to mineral source, you would use this for your asteroid miners. Uh, move to gas giant Mansorium, you would do this for your fuel harvesters. Salvage nearest wreck, you can use for your um, salvagers. One thing to note for the salvage nearest wreck is that this order does work across systems, but it will throw errors when it when it uh, when it scans the nearest system. So when it gives an order to auto jump, it will throw an error. It'll still give the order and it'll still work, but you will get an error pop up. It's a good bit of, uh, it's, it is useful for a little bit of a um, alert to let you know, hey, I'm done in this system, uh, but just keep that in mind. And Terraform Colony will is for Terraformers, that will, so they'll go over to the nearest colony um, and they will Terraform it. And so those are the default orders, exact same orders as secondary. One thing to note with the default orders is that if the primary is done and the secondary triggers, it will cause an interrupt when it does this. So if you have something that's constantly triggering its secondaries, it will constantly interrupt your auto turns and your turns in general. So you might find you might find that you have a bit of trouble progressing time. Conditional orders are a little bit different because they rely on a condition. You still get two of them, but it, they're bigger because they need the condition. So you have fuel levels, uh, parent fleet and system up here. Uh, fuel lesson, uh, sub fleets in same location, so you would use this to like collect them. Uh, current speed not equal to maximum, so you can use this when speed is below max. Uh, there's a trigger or to accelerate them. Uh, supply points less than 20 and 10%, and hostile, at ship at, hostile active ship contact in system, so when hostiles are in the system. The conditions are limited, they are few. The orders are also limited. Uh, and fairly straightforward to figure out which one's which. Unload 90% fuel, unload fuel economy, move to Sorium, obviously for the harvesters and fuel tankers. Joint parent fleet and system, well, you would obviously use that for parent fleet and system. Um, refuel economy, refuel the nearest tanker, refuel economy or tanker. These ones are actually useful if your fuel is low. Um, resupply colony, resupply supply ship, resupply colony or supply ship for when your supplies are low. Activate shields, for example, you detect a hostile, you want to turn on those shields by default. Um, deactivate shields, uh, I don't know if, like there isn't an actual no hostiles detected. So I'm not, like, maybe one of the fuel tank ones you would deactivate it for. I don't, I don't know when you would ever actually use deactivate shields. Uh, clear order list uh, you potentially use if your fuel is super low or um, for hostile actives if you want to cause them to automatically dump their orders if there is a commercial ship. Um, incorporate subfleets, change the maximum sh uh, speed, active sensors on, overhaul the colony. So fairly straightforward and they're identical across the board. Uh, start task force training, set to fleet task force training, that will, that will turn it off, that turns to stop task force training. Um, I'll talk about task force training a bit later, once we start dealing with uh, combat ships. Uh, combine will tell you to, com will let you combine it. Uh, superior will set a superior, um, will set a parent formation. Uh, copy orders to subordinate fleet, so if you're dealing with a parent fleet, uh, you can copy the orders uh, to those fleets. Uh, I believe it only works in the same location. No, same system. Um, so if you have one fleet with four subordinate uh, surveyors, you can tell the, the parent fleet um, to copy the orders and then they'll copy it. And you can copy the default ones, so you can like uh, set survey nearest. So if you have dual surveyors, you can set it to survey near next five, and then when it's done, you pick one and hit switch to survey nearest, and then they will go and survey together. And you can see what formations are actually subordinate to the fleet you're talking about. In here, you can move, merge, divide, split. Uh, the difference being is that split takes the selected ones and moves them into a new. Uh, divide um, splits them off uh, splits off everything that's not selected. So split will take the selected and give, put them into a new. Divide will take everything not selected and put them in a new. Uh, SMO to turn it on there. 
So you can move ships across. Uh, task groups can be empty, of course. Uh, they can't do anything while they're empty. As you can see, speed is one. Um, speed one means it will never move. So, yeah. Um, so speed needs to be above one. So that is special orders and organization. Fairly straightforward. Well, no, not really, but straightforward enough. History officers, uh, fluff. Um, task group history, splits, joins, stuff like that. Uh, senior officer in system. So you'll notice that this is a senior officer of the task group, but this is the senior officer in the system. Um, so this is the most experienced officer in the system. He's going to be the uh, system commander. Task force commander, we don't have an actual task force commander assigned. So if we once we do that, uh, there will be somebody in there. And officers within task groups. So we'll see what officers are actually in this task group. Um, set task group position. This will automatically transport transport uh, your task group if you need to move it instantly somewhere, if you do something stupid. Um, also, if you run out of fuel, you can move your ship back here without having to send the ship over there to refuel it manually. A um, little bit cheaty, but that's SM. So um, SM is always going to be that little bit of cheating. Not that cheating is bad. It's a single player game. You're not really going to be... Who, who are you cheating? You're cheating yourself. You're only losing out on experience. But it's also used to fix things that break. And Aurora does break. So um, never be vehemently against using Space Master. It does have legitimate uses. Um, ta average fleet training. That's up here. And total fleet mass in tons. Um... A useful little tidbit, mainly for roleplay, not really much use anywhere else. Synchronous fire on and off, Not you will you will never use these buttons here uh, because there are much more useful and places uh, better places to go, mainly in here. Um, that's because uh, they're up here and this is where you're going to be giving orders for your guns anyway, so you might as well just use these. Um, and transfer fleet, so you can give things to... Uh, different uh, empires naval organization i will not touch not in this version c sharp which is the next version out um that is currently being written by steve c sharp is going to completely gut rebuild and overhaul this entire system because right now it is can only be done ship by ship by ship and it is an absolute pain in the ass and it does very very little for what for the amount of bullshit you have to go through to actually make it work. So, I'll go over what it, how it actually works, but after this, you will never see me use this. So, essentially, um, this is organization. So, for example, you can make a survey fleet. You can make a mining fleet. You can make, like, battle group one, battle group two, battle group three, right? And what it does, you, it allows you to assign ships to that organizational structure, and then use that saved structure to automatically break fleets apart into these uh, not sub fleets or parent fleets, but completely separate fleets uh, that will then will potentially work together and allows you to much faster and easier split and recombine these fleets in theory um, because you can predetermine what fleets and what ships go into what fleets right so you don't have to go in here and go okay i need one this ship and this ship and this ship and this ship and it's split them off and then rename them and then all that jazz no um you just predetermine that and then just go split and then it's there it's named correctly it has all the correct ships in it it has um uh, I don't know if it carries the orders, but the point is this system is supposed to make those processes easier, faster, and simpler. The problem is you have to build it entirely from scratch, one ship at a time. Well, you can add task groups, but like moving one ship between a branch is a royal pain in the ass because you have to copy, then move, and you can only do it by branches. And yeah, it's just... I don't like this. I don't, uh, well, I don't like to say it, but unfortunately, it's true. This naval organization in the current game is garbage. It's a hot mess. Um, I am very, very grateful that Steve is rewriting it the way he is. 
it is going to be amazing in C sharp. If you use this yourself, kudos. I ain't going anywhere near it. And that's the last thing I want to talk about it because yeah, I never use it for that particular reason. Um, once we actually have a fleet, I might show you why it's so annoying to use. Uh, but right now, it, it's hard for me to explain why it's bad without being able to show you why it's bad. So we might touch on it a, bit, a little bit later once we actually have some ships to put into fleets. But for now, we're going to ignore it. Uh, especially because this doesn't actually affect your task force uh, allocation, right? Um, like, you can have task forces, but this doesn't determine what's in the task force. At least not that I'm aware of. Let me check. I'm pretty sure it doesn't determine what task force they're in. Yeah, because you can select it from here to determine what task force they're in. Right? This has very minimal impact uh, for the amount of crap you have to go through to make it work. Okay, that's enough about that. Let's give these orders. Do it, GS Surveyor. Bam. Order's done. Okay. So, now that we've got the orders, uh, we do want... Now, Task Forces do can give it a little bit more of a survey point boost. So, let's go set these up. Um, I touched on it before. These This is the Task Force screen. Once again, Empire Selection and Task Force Selection and where they are. Um, you have the new rename and delete Task Force. You can't delete your last one, I believe. It really, really, really doesn't like that. Um, but in order to do anything... You first thing, first of all, need to go assign a task force commander. So I'm going to leave this up. I'm going to pop a Riker open again. <clears throat> there we go. So first things first, we want, uh, let's have a look at Catherine. Uh, actually, let's go for crew training rating. I want this to be as high as possible. So Catherine and Alice. Now, Alice is Lieutenant Commander. She has amazing crew training rating, but... She's only rank one. Um, plus, the terraforming bonus is probably more useful elsewhere. Uh, Catherine has a tiny little bit less of a movement initiative rating, with only ten points less. But she has the same in a crew training rating, is a much higher rank, which suits uh, the uh, suits role playing a little bit better. And the terraforming bonus is more useful elsewhere. So, Commodore. Catherine, Graham, staff officers you need to switch to. We're going to assign you to be the commander of fleet headquarters. Uh, I might rename the task force later, um, but I'll do that later because it takes me forever to make names. Okay. Now we have our commander. <clears throat> Next, we need to allocate some staff officers. Now, we only really need a survey officer. Um, a couple of these are mostly fluff, but the survey officer is the one you really want. Um, logistics, uh, operations also provides, I believe, I believe uh, train, a little bit of fleet training. Um, survey officer provides a survey bonus. Uh, so you can see at the moment that Fighter Ops 10 has improved our uh, overall attribute by 2.5. So the task force commander only provides a quarter of their actual uh, bonuses, uh, but the full fleet training. So we'll get 200 training and 2.5 fighter ops. Okay. Operations. Operations bonus. We have two. Commander Mason Akhtar and Lieutenant Commander John Jones. Well, let's have a look. Uh, Mason has a training rating of 50, initiative 174, server bonus of 10, uh, operations of 15, 20, logistics. Uh, his, he might be better, he will be a lot better in logistics rather than operations, I would think. Especially because John Jones, he has a, uh, oh, he does have a factory, I believe. Yeah, I'm not sure how much, what, 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 the, what that gives you, but. Uh, Lieutenant Commander John Jones is what we're going to do because we don't really need his factory production bonus. I think that's for salvagers. Um, so we're going to run. We're going to stick him in operations. There we go. Assign you, and now we will refresh task force, and we can see that his training, uh, the training of the task force, has gone up by thirty points. So 
Mason only has a training rating of 50. So we would have lost a chunk of bonus. John Jones, well, no, he actually doesn't have any. Oh, I thought that was uh, training for a second. So, yeah, he doesn't really have a training bonus, but we still get a little bit more of a bonus of 30%, because he gets the operations bonus of 15%, uh, and that's given us a little bit of a training bonus, but it's also given us a, an operation bonus of 15%. Uh, so, the staff officer gives their full bonus. The task force commander gives a quarter, because um, they can potentially give bonuses to everything. Uh, now, we don't need int intel, we don't need communications, public affairs, we have no fighters, so we're not going to do fighter ops. Um, we don't have any transports, so we don't need a logistics ops, we need a survey ops. Let's go talk survey. Lieutenant Commander Daniel Walker. We don't have an, we don't ha really have much uh, use for his fat, his, yes, his factory production bonus but we do have use for a survey bonus. The next one down is Commander Heger Bjorn, Bjorn Logson. Okay. Um, he has a lot of bonuses, but the only one that we're going to get anything out of here is a survey bonus. And that's 15%, which is 10 points lower. Daniel Walker, we lose the factory production, but we don't need that. We do gain massive survey bonus and we're not losing anything else out of him. Um, and none of these guys have any, um, training anyway. So Daniel Walker, you get survey. Actually, can we? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, the M3 doesn't really mean anything. Doesn't matter there. Um, but you do need a rank three. So you need captain or above for fleet headquarters. Okay. So now... We have a survey task for task force commander, and he gives a 25% bonus. If we now go and have a look at a surveyor, it's gone up from 3.8 to 4.7. So now we are generating almost five whole points compared to the three that we started off with. So that's a pretty nice boost overall in our survey output, which is really nice. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind for fleet headquarters, they only work within the system that they're in, okay, or well, task force. So task, forces only, task force officers only work in the system that they're in. As if we were to move this force out of Seoul, we would drop back down to 3.8 because that task force bonus is gone. What you need to bring your task force um, to different systems is a component that I don't think we actually have access to yet. No, we don't. Um, it's a flag bridge. Okay, uh, We're going to get it soon enough, but uh, you need a flag bridge. So a task force can be moved to a flagship, um, and any ship with a flag uh, with a flag bridge will be uh, available to become a flagship. So you can move them there, otherwise they have to sit on a planet. Okay. So that is our task forces set. We have a nice amount of survey being generated by our survey ship. Uh, let's let her rip and we'll see what comes out. Now, we're gonna, I'm gonna open the log on my end. So we're gonna, here we go. And we're gonna set one day events. And look at her go. All right, we are getting some good discoveries. We've got uh, minerals on Luna. Wow. we got minerals on Luna. That's cool. Um, we got Wolf, Mercury, uh, Ank, Mars has a good amount of minerals. We'll have a look at those in a sec. Uh, Coma Solar. So we're hitting some of the, uh, some of the uh, comets around here. Um, getting a whole bunch of nice mineral discoveries going through the going through the asteroid belt there so we're going to hit a lot of small easily accessible deposits all over the asteroid belt um, <clears throat> got a new officer ticking along okay that was the uh oh, hold on hold on hold on this is important okay if you have auto assignments on and only if you have auto assignments on this is not trigger if your auto assignment is off all right. If you have auto assignments on, any officer that has not had an assignment in the last six years is fired. 
So be careful. If uh, early on you can very easily, like we basically have now, you can very easily lose a whole swath of your officers um, to uh, to the quarter cull, um, simply because that you, you you can't give them a job. You just can't. There's not enough of them that you don't have enough jobs to give everybody a, a, an assignment. So auto assigner may not necessarily be good to leave it on beyond that first assignment. Um, one other thing to note, you'll notice that we now actually have a communications officer and a public affairs and a fighter ops and a logistics and intelligence officer. The reason for this is because the auto assigner will not assign a task force commander but once a task force has a commander, it will auto assign the staff officers. So we do actually have these now. Uh, fighter ops, I believe, is actually broken. Uh, I I haven't confirmed it myself, but apparently fighter ops does is actually it actually works backwards, so it slows down your fighter reload rather than speeding it up. Um, so we might want to do something about that once we actually have some fighters. Um, You'll also notice that uh, we have 23% fighter ops because we have the uh, two and a half from Catherine uh, and 20 from Brent. Uh, but yeah, so we, yeah, we do have some pretty impressive bonuses at the moment, which is great. So we'll turn auto turns back on. Um, once the cull happens on reassign, usually in the next couple of ticks, you'll also get the order promotions as well. Uh, if you ha do have automatic promotions. So just keep that in mind that the promotions do happen in the next couple of ticks uh, during the reassign cycle. Okay, we are getting... Where Whereabouts is the Mark Arison so far? Okay, it's still doing the asteroid belt. It's... Is that Jupiter? Yeah, that's Jupiter. So it's still inside Jupiter at the moment. But we have some production. So you'll notice that the turns were interrupted because production finished. Um, construction of... Construction factory has begun. Uh, construction of mass driver has begun. Construction of... Construction factories... No, conversion to construction factories has completed. So... We now have... Some nice production. Why 25% bonus? 20, 25% bonus? Oh, it's using 20 and 25% bonus. Okay. Let's read that for a sec. Okay. So, uh, we now have our 500 construction factories in March of year 7. And we are now producing some more construction factories, but at a slower, well, significantly slower rate now, because they're, we're not only using less uh, percentage, but we're also uh, they're also much more expensive. Uh, but we also also are producing mass drivers, and mass drivers are going to be critical to our off-world mining operations, which we're going to want to do. Uh, the other thing is that we really do need to get our maintenance facilities up. So hopefully those will be built before uh, we need to start. Wait, no, it's commercial. We don't have to maintain it all. Never mind. Um, it's built at a naval yard, but it is a commercial ship. <coughs> Okay. <laughs> Excuse me while I die quietly. Okay. I think I might put a break in the episode here. Because uh, I really need to drink water. <clears throat> um, but I'm going to shift... Before we go, I'm going to shift this up to actually 25. Um, just to use up the industry there. So, uh, next cycle of production is going to be done uh, for... is going to be the mines in 7th of March 08. Uh, probably sooner. Because of construction factories. Um, but, we, but in the next episode, I'm going to go through uh, the process of um, evaluating what discoveries as your survey has done so that's what i want to do in the next one i'm going to stop talking now i'm going to put that break so i will see you in the next time next episode once i have uh once i'm no longer dying see you